Stop for a moment and think about numbers. It might sound innocent, but don't be fooled. Their history is as tumultuous as a soap opera, full of dramas, rebellions, and revolutions. Zero, negative numbers, imaginary numbers, and square roots. All of these are now fully integrated into the family of numbers. But once upon a time, they were outcasts. Philosophers were confused when they saw them. Some claimed they were the devil's invention. Mathematicians tried to hide them. And teachers who saw them in answers would shout, This doesn't make sense! It's a mistake! This is an absurd solution! But just like superheroes with painful pasts, these numbers went through a long journey. Rejected, vilified, nearly erased, and then made a brilliant comeback. All thanks to stubborn mathematicians who believed in them and what they could contribute to the world. Think about it. Mathematics is seen as a world of order, precision, and control. But once, at certain points in history, Ideas emerged that shook the entire system. Numbers that, in the eyes of mathematicians back then, seemed like a total contradiction. A cosmic joke of sorts. And the reaction? Ridicule, persecution, hiding, and even boycotts. Yet it was precisely these ideas that changed everything. Ready to meet the new old stars of the number world? Let's go. First in line. The official sensation, zero. Sounds simple, right? It's just nothing. But once, zero was a real mind bender. The number zero, which seems so obvious to us today, wasn't always here. Yes, you heard right. Zero didn't always exist. How is that possible? It's so simple. If you ask any elementary school child today what three minus three is, They'll quickly reply, zero, without a second thought, as if it's self-evident. But the idea of nothing as a number in its own right sparked fierce opposition in many cultures. Have you ever wondered why there is no year zero in our calendar system? Because zero didn't exist when they started counting. More than 2,000 years ago, the idea of nothing was truly a mystery in the eyes of the Greeks. They believed numbers were meant to describe tangible things. Quantities, length, area. So when someone threw the idea of zero into the air, they immediately recoiled. Measure nothing? What are you talking about? For them, zero wasn't a number, but a bad mathematical joke. After all, there is no line of zero length, no triangle with zero area, and no sphere with zero volume. They love geometry so much that zero seemed like a sacrilege. What do we do with a number that represents nothing, they wondered. What does it even represent? They simply couldn't understand. Why would anyone need a number that represents nothing? And but in India, around the 5th century, Brilliant mathematicians said, wait, even nothing is something. They invented the symbol zero and used it in a mind-blowing decimal system. Yes, zero finally got the respect it deserved. Not only did they understand what zero was and realized it wasn't just a strange mystery, but they made it the heart of the decimal number system. From there, through Arab mathematicians like Al-Khwarizmi, Yes, the one who invented the algorithm, the idea spread to Europe. But Europe? Not ready at all. In medieval Europe, zero was sometimes called the devil's number. There were places that banned using it in invoices and financial documents. Sometimes it was considered sorcery. Yes, you heard right. Sorcery. Imagine, zero was a dangerous number. But despite all the odd opinions and fears, with the development of algebra, zero became a basic tool. In function analysis, in writing large numbers, in physics, and even in the foundations of mathematics itself. Over time, zero became a quiet hero. It didn't just survive. 
It became the foundation of algebra, infinitesimal calculus, and advanced fields like technology. The zero that Europeans feared is the very thing running the modern world, including the smartphone or computer you're looking at right now. Who would have thought? So the next time you get a zero on a test, remember, sometimes even the concept of nothing and zero can advance mathematics. Wait, if zero is a relatively new idea, what does that mean for negative numbers? After all, Without zero, how could we even imagine a less-than-nothing situation? And even after zero was invented, the idea of negative numbers was really controversial. Today, it seems natural to us. How do we explain a bank debt without negative numbers? How do we say that tomorrow's temperature will be 5 degrees below zero? And how do we measure the speed of a car driving in reverse? But once upon a time, it sounded completely illogical to mathematicians. How can something be less than nothing, they asked. You can't have minus three apples, so what's the point? Still, by the 7th century, mathematicians in India were already using negative numbers as debts versus assets. The Chinese took it even further and colored them. Red for debt, black for profit. But in Europe, they treated negative numbers like a bad joke, calling them absurd numbers. Mistakes, or simply invalid solutions. It wasn't until mathematicians like Descartes, Newton, and Euler showed that negative numbers were crucial for solving equations and for developments in geometry that they started to gain respect. Today, it's hard to imagine mathematics without them. Graphs, money, motion in opposite directions, everything relies on negative numbers. Once negative numbers were finally accepted into the kingdom of numbers, a new troubling question arose. What do we do with the square root of a negative number? Until then, any number you multiplied by itself would be positive or zero. Negative? not on the numbers we knew. It just didn't work. It was as if the rules stopped and said, beyond here, no entry. But instead of giving up, mathematicians decided to invent something new. A number whose square gives a negative result. And so I was born. The number whose square is negative one. At first, it seemed like a mathematical trick a temporary solution to a stubborn quadratic equation problem. Even Descartes, who coined the term imaginary numbers, didn't really mean to give it a compliment. But despite the doubts, mathematics didn't stop. Euler, Gauss, and Riemann took I seriously and built an entire world around it, complex numbers, a combination of a real part and an imaginary part. Gauss even gave them a geometric form, a two-dimensional plane where you could place any complex number like a point. Suddenly, numbers that weren't supposed to exist got a place of honor with an address, a neighborhood, and a view. Imaginary numbers turned out to be essential not only in algebra, but also in physics, waves, electricity, engineering, signal theory, and even in quantum machines. Imaginary may be the least flattering name for one of the most important inventions in science. Did you hear about the mathematician who tried to hide the existence of an entire family of numbers? In ancient times, the Greeks believed every number could be expressed as a fraction, a ratio of two whole numbers. For them, this wasn't just an assumption but a fundamental principle that represented the order and hymeny of the universe. Then came a surprising discovery. The diagonal of a square with side length one is the square root of two, a number that can't be written as a fraction. According to the legend, Pythagoras and his disciples tried to hide this discovery, fearing it would shake the foundations of mathematics. Even the name irrational hints at rejection, as if these numbers were defying common sense. Over time, numbers like the square root of 2 
pi, and e became central figures. They're non-repeating, non-terminating, and can't be precisely written as fractions. To deal with them, mathematicians developed tools and methods, and so the field of analysis was born. For example, pi, which represents the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter, was discovered to be non-terminating and non-repeating. In the 18th century, it was proven to be irrational. And in the 19th century, it was shown to be transcendental, meaning it can't be expressed as the root of any polynomial with rational coefficients. Thanks to this property, it was proven that it's impossible to square the circle with just a ruler and compass. Today, irrational numbers are no longer seen as exceptions. On the contrary, they make up the overwhelming majority on the number line. Most numbers cannot be written as fractions. In other words, those numbers that were once hidden are now the heartbeat of mathematics. Because wherever there is motion, change, a limit, or a curve, there lies an irrational number. And let's wrap up our journey with the most mysterious figure in mathematics, infinity. Infinity was an idea that managed to baffle philosophers, excite poets, and drive mathematicians crazy. For Aristotle, infinity was like an endless soap opera, always continuing, but never reaching the final episode. He saw it as a process, not a result, not a real thing. And so they continued to think for centuries, until the 19th century, when Georg Cantor appeared on the scene, the man who dared to look infinity in the eye and ask, So how big are you really? Cantor not only claimed that infinity is a legitimate mathematical entity, he also showed that there are different types of infinity, and there is an order between the different kinds of infinity. For example, the infinity of real numbers between 0 and 1 is larger than the infinity of even numbers. Yes, just like with numbers, infinity also needs some order, sometimes. Cantor's ideas shook the foundations of mathematics. Many of his colleagues accused him of mathematical heresy, and others hinted that he had lost his mind. But over time, it became clear that he was simply ahead of his time. Today, his work forms the foundation of set theory, mathematical logic, and the scientific understanding of infinite spaces. Because if there's one thing we can learn from infinity, it's that sometimes, to understand the limits of what's possible, you first have to dare to cross them. So what's the lesson here? Mathematics is not a rigid rulebook. It's a creative adventure that's always evolving. Numbers that were once called impossible now run our world. Zero, negative, imaginary, irrational, infinity. They're proof that even the craziest ideas can become inseparable. So, the next time you hear something that sounds crazy, wait. Maybe it's the next big thing. If you enjoy this journey through the rebellious world of numbers, give it a like, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel for more thrilling mathematical adventures. What's the weirdest number you've encountered? Write it in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video.